Hello and welcome to a numbers edition of Apple a Day. This episode continues my series on logical functions for Apple numbers. Today I'll be covering AND, OR, and NOT. These functions are standard programming terms used in making logical decisions. In numbers, you would typically use these within an IF function. So let's dive in and see what the AND function is all about. So in programming again, if you wanted to check if more than one thing is true, you would join them with the AND operator. You would say if A is equal to 3 and B is equal to 4, then do something. So in numbers, you can't write the formula that way. You have to use the AND function. And the AND function will return true or false. Now I've got a document open, but before I use these examples, I'll quickly go over the logic. I'll just pick a blank cell and type in the equal sign to bring up the formula editor. And then I'll type in AND and press return. And you can see it takes one parameter. But I can add more by typing in a comma after this parameter. Each parameter is an individual check. So in the example I used, if a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 4, the first parameter would be a is equal to 3, and the second parameter would be b is equal to 4. It's like you're putting in the word AND between each of these parameters. So for AND to return true, every parameter must also be true. If any one of them is false, then AND will return false. I'll demonstrate. In the first parameter, I'll type in true. And in the second parameter, I'll also type in true. And the same again for a third parameter, also true. If I press return, it displays true. Makes sense. It's like I'm saying true and true and true is equal to true. I'll add another formula with the AND function, and this time I'll make one of the parameters false. I'll press return, and now it displays false. So just as I said, all parameters must be true for the AND function to return true. Note that numerically, 1 is the equivalent of true, and 0 is the equivalent of false. I'll add one more formula by typing in the equal sign. I'll type in AND and press return. And here I'll type in a series of three ones. 1, 1, 1, and press return. And that is also true. 1 and 1 and 1 is the same as saying true and true and true. If I were to type in a 1, a 0, and a 1, that would have returned false. Now, I get that this seems a little bit abstract, but I wanted to cover the logic of it before we jumped into some real-world examples. I'm just going to clear this out. So here I have a list of time travel movies, the year that they were made, and the Rotten Tomatoes score. Let's say we wanted to know the movies made since 2000, which have a score of 60 or greater. So I'm going to type in the equal sign to bring up the formula editor. I'll type in AND and press return. And in the first parameter, I'll select the cell containing the year. And then I'll type in greater than or equal to 2000. I'll type in a comma so it creates another parameter. And this time I'll select a score and type in greater than or equal to 60. So this should be pretty clear. The AND function will return true if the year is greater than or equal to 2000 and the score is greater than or equal to 60. I'll press return. And I'll copy this formula to the rest of the cells by grabbing the autofill handle and dragging it down to the last row with the movie in it. And you can see the results. We have four of these that returned true. But having it display true and false isn't really something you'd want to have on your spreadsheet. We want to use the true and false value to display some other text. So for that, we're going to use the if function. I have a detailed tutorial on the if function, and you can find it right here. I'll also include it in the description below. So I'm going to edit this first formula by double-clicking on it. And at the beginning, I'm going to type in if, and then type in an opening bracket. So the first parameter in the if function is the expression that we want to test. And in this example, that expression is this entire AND function. So we got if, and then we're checking the results of the AND function. And if it's true, I want to go right to the end of this line. I'm going to type in a comma. And this next parameter is what will be displayed if the AND function returns true. So in this example, I'm just going to display the name of the movie again if the AND function returns true. So I'll simply select the cell with the movie title. I'll type in another comma. And this next parameter is what will be displayed if AND returns false. I just want to show a hyphen or a dash. So I'm just going to type that inside double quotes. Then I need a closing bracket for the IF function. So I'll do that right now. Type in a closing bracket. 
and then I'm going to press return. Once again, I'm going to drag the autofill handle to populate these cells with the new formula. And now it shows the movie title whenever the AND function returns true. Note that the movies that were made after 2000, which don't show up here, they don't fulfill the second requirement of the AND function, which is to have a Rotten Tomato score of greater than or equal to 60. So let's move over to the OR function. This works exactly like AND, except the logic is a little bit different. AND requires that all of the parameters be true, whereas OR only requires one of them to be true. So in programming, this would read like this. If A is equal to 2, or B is equal to 3, or C is equal to 4, then do something. Only one of those needs to be true. And that's the same way in numbers. If at least one of these is true, then OR will return true. If all of them are false, OR will return false. Let's edit our formula and change AND to OR. I'll double click the formula to edit it. Then I'll double click on the AND function so I can type over it with the word OR. I'll press return and copy the formula to the rest of the cells using autofill. Now almost all of these have returned true. That's because either the year is greater than or equal to 2000 or the score is greater than or equal to 60. The only one that didn't succeed with either of those tests is the final countdown. The year is before 2000 and the score is less than 60 and therefore OR returned false. Okay, so that should cover AND and OR. These can get pretty complicated as you can also have embedded AND functions within OR functions and the other way around. Next, let's go over the NOT function. I'll just add a new formula and type in NOT and press return. This takes a single parameter that's either true or false. And by the way, the term Boolean also represents true or false. The AND function and the OR function all must take Boolean values, meaning that whatever is inside each parameter, it has to return true or false. It has to be Boolean. I'll just type in the word true and press return. False is displayed. All the NOT function does is return the opposite Boolean value of the supplied parameter. So if the parameter results to true, NOT will return false. And the other way around, if the parameter is false, then NOT will return true. So what would happen if we put the OR function from our movie formula inside the NOT function? Let's try it. I'll double click to edit. And between the IF function name and the OR function name, I'm going to type in NOT with an opening bracket. And then after the closing bracket of the OR function, I'll add a closing bracket for the NOT function. So basically what we're doing here is the OR function itself is inside the NOT function. So the result of OR is what's returned to NOT. NOT will then flip it from false to true or true to false. And that's what gets tested inside of the IF function. I'll press return. And now the movie is no longer displayed. I'll copy this function to the rest of the cells. And now the only movie showing is the final countdown, when that was the only movie that wasn't showing. So obviously the NOT function made the IF function do the opposite. And that's pretty much it. That's all there is to NOT. At first you might think there's not many uses for NOT, but believe me, the more complex your formulas become, there will be situations when it's easier to use NOT rather than to rewrite some of your AND and OR functions. Well, that's it for today. I sure hope you found this helpful. And if you did, please like, subscribe, and comment. My name is John Martins. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.